Hey guys, welcome back to Pow Gang. If you're new to the channel, here we make cubing related content such as reviews, tutorials, unboxings, fun challenges, and more. So be sure to click the subscribe button and make sure to watch other content when you're done with this video so that you can check out our new stuff. Now that we're into the video, today I'm going to teach you all a very easy method in solving a 4x4 called the Yao method. This tutorial will make it very simple and easy for you guys, so make sure to watch the full tutorial on how to solve a 4x4 using the Yao method. Now, if you just uh, learned to solve a 4x4 or you already know how to solve a 4x4, this is great for you because you should have used the reduction method where you solve all the centers, then you solve all the edges, then you solve it like a 3x3. But if you're a beginner, I'd recommend using the reduction method because it's easier to understand, but um, I have tutorials on that, but if you just want to try to solve it using the L method, this is the tutorial for you. Now as an overview of the method, the way you do it is first you solve the white center, then you solve the yellow center, and by center I mean these four pieces in the middle if you're new to cubing, and then what you do is you put it on its side like this. And the, by the way, the Yao method is what the world record is held on. It's the most efficient method for 4x4, but I'd recommend using uh, reduction uh, for all the other big cubes. But for 4x4, I'd recommend using Yao. And then once you have the first two centers, what you do is you solve three of the edges. So one, two, three of the cross edges using slice moves right here. And then what you do is you solve all the rest of the centers and then you solve all the edges. So let's get into this tutorial. So to solve the white center, so these four middle pieces, first what you need to do is you need to make a bar and that can simply be rotating one piece so it is next to where another piece um, is if you move it up and then it's like that. But if yours is like this, it won't work because they're diagonal and if yours is like this that also won't work because that would move the other piece up so you need to move it like this to where if you move it up then they're both next to each other and that's your first bar now what you need to do is you need to make a second bar to put next to it so what you do is make sure this piece is not on the line of where uh, the other pieces are. So then what you need to do is you need to move another piece so it's in the layer where uh, it's the free layer, not the layer with the bar, and then you move it up. Now what you do is you separate the pieces or if they're already separated, that's fine. And then what you do is like you did before, you need to position them and rotate it so each piece will be next to the other piece if you move it up. So then once you have this bar done, you can do a U2, or if you already have it like this, make it so the bars are on opposite sides, move it up, and then you have your first center done. Now, if you have your second center to do, what you need to do is you need to make a bar like you did before, and you guys should know how to solve it using the beginner method, most of you at least. So you move this piece up to make the bar, and then to uh, preserve the white and the yellow, you move it to the side so where you can move this piece down and it won't affect this bar. So now I move that bar down and it won't affect that bar. Now what you need to do is you need to pair the other bar and mine are all ready to be paired. So I move it up, then you do your U2 and move it down and then you um, have all the yellow pieces on top so what you need to do for this case is you need to make sure they're both on the same side then you move one side up you do a u2 then move that side down now if you're ever in this special case where as you can see i have this three pieces on the top and the white is all finished by the way and i have this one piece right here what you need to do is you need to move this piece so it is in the same corner of the middle of the three pieces so it wouldn't be like this and it had it would have to be like this because this is in the middle of the three pieces or the two other pieces surrounding it so then you move this piece up 
and then you do a U or a U prime, then move it down, and then you should have your yellow center fit. Now you need to solve three white edges on the bottom. So what you do is you rotate it on this side to where the yellow is right there, and then the white is right there. And then what you do is you find two edges that match. As you can see, I have these two, the um, white reds. So then you move them so they're both, uh, so you can see them both. And then if they're next to each other, then you can move it up to pair them. If they're like this, you need to make sure that they're on this middle slice layer. So don't let them be on this side or this side. They need to be in the middle slice. So then if they are both in the same uh, line, like if they're both in that slice, what you need to do is you need to move one twice and then you move it down until they pair together and then you can simply put that piece in. Now what you need to do is find two other ones and as you can see I have these two white and oranges right there and then you need to do that same thing or if they're both on the same side like that you can just uh, pair them together and then since you guys should know the color coordination of a 3x3, the orange is always opposite of the red. So you need to make it so it's opposite. And when you move it in, you make it opposite like that. So now we have the uh, other ones. And I have this uh, white and blue one. And I have that white and blue one. So I move the white and blue one out so it's in the middle layer. And I have this one. Now, uh, to, for this case, you don't want to move it so it would move the red out. You need to move it so there's an open spot right there, so there's no edges right there, and then you can move it out. And then you can pair them together, and if you look at it like this, it goes orange, green, red, blue, so the blue needs to go right there. Now that we have the three side pieces in, what we're going to do is we're going to still keep it like this and solve another center. So I already have this orange bar right there, so I'm going to move it down like that. And then I found the other two orange pieces that aren't in a bar. So I make sure they're, they're both on their open slice. This one isn't in any other orange pieces slices. So then I'm going to move it like that. And then as you can see, I have one of them in the top uh, right and the other is in the top left. So then they can match perfectly and then I have that bar and then I can just join the two bars together just like that. Now I'm going to put that bar on the bottom and we'll move on to our next bar. So for the green bar or the green one, as you can see I also can move this to the back. It can either be on the bottom or the back, it just can't be on the top or the front. So the green goes above um, orange. So what I can do is, keeping this uh, unfinished edge on the top, I need to move it up like that, and then I can do a U2 and put this bar on its correct layer, and then you also still need to keep this like this, because if you do it like that, then it would split the edge. So you need to move it like this if you're going to do um, any of your turns, and it's good to turn uh, the ones with your right hand, so then it doesn't split any of the uh, edges and you can just keep that on top and then you build your second bar like I taught before and then you simply insert it so if I were to insert this bar into there I do it uh, with them both on the same side then I can move this piece so it is not uh, it won't break any edges and then I do a U2 and then I move it back and now we have the two centers done. Now you need to solve the last one and this is a case I already showed you. You need to have it like this and then you can just move it like this and still make sure that that bar or that um, edge, that's an unfinished edge right there and then you finish solving the centers just like that. Now that you have all of your centers done and you have three edges correctly on the bottom you need to rotate it so now as you can see the three edges match their centers just like that and now you need to solve other edges 
So if I see that I have these two orange and green edge pieces, I need to slice like that and then I move it up. I replace it with an incorrect edge, move it down and then slice back. And now that I have one edge done, what you need to do is you need to move it over so it is right above where the incorrect edge slot is from the cross edges. And then you move, need to move it in there so that it fills up that space and you don't need to look at the bottom anymore. So now what you do is you find two other ones and I found these two white and green edges and I move it like that. And as you can see, I can't slice over because the white and green ones are both on the same slice. So if you want to flip an edge, the algorithm will be at the top of the screen. How you do it is you do R, U, R prime, F, R prime, F prime, R, and then that edge is flipped and you can slice over, replace it with an incorrect edge, and then slice back. And now that we have that piece solved, we can put it in like you would put a normal cross piece in, and we need to move this piece to the top so it doesn't get missliced. So now I have, let's see here, I have the red and uh, yellow, and I have a free slice edge pairing tutorial. I don't have a beginner tutorial, I have a more advanced big cube tutorial on five, six, and seven by seven. So you guys can check that out if you please. And here I have these two, red and yellow. I have to flip them. And then now that they're in different slices, I can slice, replace it with an incorrect edge. And it, by an incorrect edge, I mean an edge that's not solved. So you don't wanna replace it with that edge you'd want to replace it with an edge that's not solved and then you slice back. So keep doing this until all of your top layer um, has correct edges. So your top layer should look like this when you're done and it has all four edges on the top, all uh, four edges on the bottom and now you have it like this. So what you're going to do here is you're going to find the edges and you're going to find two that are next to each other. So that are in the two edge slots next to each other and it doesn't matter if they're flipped or not. It's actually good if they're both on the same side. So you want to make sure that they're both um, on the same layer. So as you can see, mine are like that. And now what you need to do is if you, uh, you need to do a slice that's a U prime like that. And then you need to do a flip algorithm, which still is at the top of the screen. Then you slice back and you have paired that edge. So now you do this with all of your edges. So if I have these two, you need to make sure that they're on the same slice. And I showed you the flip algorithm. And if, you, uh, if they're on different slices, like for example, these two uh, yellow and oranges, you need to flip them so that they're both on the same slice, so you just need to flip one. So now I have these two yellow and green ones. I slice, then I flip one. Then I slice back. And now I have that um, yellow and green solved. So now I move on to the last two. Now these last two aren't uh, in that good of position. So I need to do a, uh, take one of the edges out and then put the other edge back in. So then you can put them right next to each other. Now, as you can see, they're both on different slices. So I need to flip one of them. Preferably the right one if you're right-handed. And then what you do is you slice. So you need to make sure that they're both on the same slice, each of the uh, edges that you need to put together. You slice, you flip one of the edges, slice back, and now all of your edges should be solved. So you need to solve it like a three by three, but don't uh, leave the video yet because I need to show you guys some important things when solving a four by four. So the reason I told you guys not to leave the video 
was because there are some special cases and once you have your first uh, two layers done or three layers done you need to uh, solve the yellow cross but this is a special case because normally you would solve the cross uh, and there would be either two edges or no edges but in this case there is three edges and that is physically impossible on a uh, three by three so what you're going to do here is you need to do a special algorithm to flip this front edge and that algorithm would just flip it so you may need to make sure the edge that needs to be flipped is in the front there also is the case where there is one edge for four by four and if it's like that you put the edge on the right side and then you do f r u r prime u prime f prime now to flip the edge here is the algorithm that you need to do it will be at the top of the screen you do wide r2 v2 u2 wide l u2 wide r prime u2 wide r u2 f2 wide r f2 wide l prime then you do a b2 wide r2 and then you should be in a three by three stage where all of your edges are back together and there should be an easy case for you to solve the cube now and then you need to do your last layer so if you're in your last layer uh, solve it like normal but you also need to know a PLL parity algorithm and that's the same if you're using the other method where you need to orient the corners and then you need to swap two edges how you do that is as you can see I have this side right here which looks like an F perm here it looks like a J perm and here it looks like an A perm or a B perm so now this is an illegal case where uh, there isn't really a uh, so easy solution and it's not a normal parity so if I do my J perm right here these two edges need to be swapped and that isn't a usual U perm so to swap these two edges the algorithm that you would use is goes like this you do little r2 which is that little slice right there U2 little r2 wide u2 little r2 wide u2 and then you can do your uh, last layer move and then you can finish solving it like a three by three so those two algorithms are really important to learn because uh, those include solving the cube you don't know if you are going to get a parity skip or if you're going to use one of those algorithms so those are just really important to learn because you don't know if you're going to get them or not hey guys thank you for watching this video i hope this tutorial helped you learn how to solve a 4x4 using the yao method this method is the most efficient for 4x4 and i really hope this tutorial helped you be sure to click the subscribe button and make sure to check out all other content. I hope to see you guys next time.